wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Well, it is really good to be here today, and um, I always love visiting Holy Trinity Hounslow because it is a little bit of a taste of heaven, because there, there are, feel, I always feel like the whole world is here uh, in this place. Uh, we've got confirmation candidates and baptism candidates this morning from so many different parts of the world. We've got people from, from India, from Iran, from Russia, from the UK, from all over. Um, but I would like to take a picture of you all. Is that all right? Do you mind if I do that? Just to get a sense of where we're from. And so if I can um, just take a picture right now, if I can find the thing. Here we are. There you are. Do you want to wave? Everyone waving? Is that all right? Wonderful. Thank fantastic. Good. And I want to speak this morning to, um, to those who are being baptized and confirmed. But I often feel when I'm preaching in a, at a confirmation, it's a bit like a wedding. You know, you kind of preach to the couple who are getting married, but everyone else is listening in as well. So I want to preach to those of you who are being baptized and confirmed today, but also being aware that everyone else is listening in as well, because there's something hopefully here for all of us. I came across a a survey a little while ago that that asked people, what do you really want in life? And it came up with 10 things that people wanted in their lives. And uh, I wonder if you'd uh, guess what they might be. The, uh, The top one that came out in this survey was that people felt they wanted to travel around the world, Of all the people who were surveyed, about 47% of people said that's what they want to do. Whatever they do in life, they want to travel. They want to see as much of the world as they can. 45% of people said they wanted to visit a dream holiday destination. 35% said they wanted to own a home. 35% also said they want to get in shape, they want to get fit. The other things were seeing one of the seven wonders of the world, owning a dream car, retiring early, that's 25%. Learning a new skill, a new language, maybe learn music or whatever it might be, uh, renovating their home or getting a new job or something like that. These are the kind of things that people dreamed of. And uh, as I read that survey, the reading that we just had from Luke's Gospel came to mind because it was a sobering reminder. Because what our reading said was this, what good is it if you get everything you've dreamed and yet lose your very soul? What good is it if you become successful, you get rich, you become famous, you get respected, you get your dream holiday, you get to travel the world, you own your dream car, and yet you lose your very soul? And at the heart of this reading today is this invitation to find our true selves, to find the person that God made you to be. Because that is what Christian faith is. It's about finding your soul, finding yourself. But the route to finding yourself is maybe not one that we would have expected. And I want to just dwell for a few moments on the things that Jesus says that we need to do if we are to find our true selves. And he says three things. If you want to be my disciple, he says, you must learn to deny yourself, to take up your cross daily, and to follow me. Those three things. That's what we need to learn to do if we are to find our true selves. First one, deny yourself. I don't know if you've noticed how we talk about ourselves these days. Um, I came across the name of a, of a, of a restaurant <clears throat> in Bournemouth the other day called Indulge Yourself. 
That was the name of the restaurant. We talk quite a lot about the need to express ourselves, to, to be ourselves, to help ourselves, to look after ourselves. We talk about finding ourselves. We sometimes even talk about marketing ourselves to get the best job that's out there. But the one thing you don't often hear in modern life is this invitation of Jesus to deny yourself. Now, what does he mean when he says we have to learn to deny yourself? I was talking with the candidates for baptism and confirmation just before the service. And one of them was saying that uh, what they were expecting, that when they come to baptism, and we have the pool here, and we will see in a very dramatic way in a few short moments, uh, some of our baptism candidates will be baptized in immersion. What happens in baptism is that someone is plunged under the water, and then they are raised up from the water. Sometimes we do it in a full pool like this. Sometimes we do it with just sprinkling some water on a, on a baby's head. It doesn't matter. The symbolism is the same. <clears throat> the idea is that we go down into the water of baptism, and then we are raised up a new person. And St. Paul talks about it like this. He says it's a bit like your old self is buried in the waters of baptism, and your new self emerges. <clears throat> It's why babies are often given a, a new name at baptism. They're given a Christian name, not just the name they inherit from their family, their surname, but their own individual name. They're given a new name. Very often people who come into Christian faith from other faiths gain a new Christian name as they are baptized into the Christian faith. And so when a person is baptized, as we will see in a moment, there is in this real sense their old self is buried in the waters of baptism, and a new self emerges. But the reality is that that old self continues to live on a little bit. And so we have to learn in the Christian life to deny that old self and encourage the new self, our new Christian self. And we need to learn to recognize the voice of those two selves. The new self is that little voice inside your head that's saying, oh, my first calling is to follow Jesus. It's to love God and to love my neighbor. It's to do the right thing. It's to sacrifice my own desires for the sake of my neighbor. It's to love Jesus above everything else. The old self is that little voice inside you that's saying, what about me? What can I get out of this situation? What are my rights? Why isn't everyone else taking any notice of me? Sometimes we hear ourselves saying things that maybe betray that old self. When we say, I've got my rights. How dare they treat me like that? Well, that little telltale voice, when you go into a situation and you ask, do these people really know who I am? We need to learn to recognize the old self that just wants to be the center of attention, that wants everybody else to think we're wonderful, that old self that is constantly wanting to be the center of everything, that basically wants to be God. And we need to deny that self, but instead to allow our new selves in Christ to emerge, that new self that is centered up not upon myself and what I want out of life, grabbing everything I can for myself, but the new self that is focused upon Jesus Christ and upon the needs of my neighbor. Now, we, we kind of know this with children, don't we? And children, sometimes they have a bit of a tantrum, and uh, we learn to discipline children uh, when they just don't get their own way and they complain about it. And it's a little bit like that with us as Christians. We need to discipline our old self. Now, denying ourselves doesn't mean abusing ourselves. It doesn't mean not taking care of ourselves. There's a proper self-care that we have, to, and we, have, we have to engage with. If we're no, we don't look after ourselves, we're no use to anybody else. But unless we learn to discipline ourselves, we will lose ourselves. We need to bring in those disciplines of the Christian life, those disciplines of fasting, of silence, of sacrifice, of prayer, 
the fellowship, making sure we've got those disciplines in our life that discipline the old self and instead allow the new self to emerge. So that's the first thing we need to learn to do, to deny ourselves, to put our old selves to death and to allow our new selves to emerge in Christ. Second thing Jesus says to us is that we need to learn to take up our cross. Take up your cross daily and follow me. Now, for many Christians in the world, that is a literal challenge. One of our government ministers said recently, there are parts of the world today where to be a Christian is to put your life in danger. From continent to continent, Christians are facing discrimination, ostracism, torture, even murder, simply for the faith that they follow. There are parts of the world where to be baptized is to have a sign put upon you that could literally get you killed. And that calling to follow Christ, to take up your cross daily, is something that each one of us is called to. Now, even in a country like this, where we don't face much persecution, there's still that calling to take up our cross. And so my question to you is, what is the cross that God has asked you to bear? Because for each one of us, there is usually something that God has given to you to bear that you would rather not have to bear. I don't know what it is for you. It may be a, a parent who's difficult to care for. It may be a long-term illness. It may be a difficult relationship at work. It may be a repeated temptation that won't go away. Most of us have got something that we have to carry with us in our lives that we would rather God would take it away somehow. Now, what is Jesus' wisdom to us when we think of that cross that we have to bear? His wisdom is not to avoid it, not to ignore it, but to pick it up every day and carry it. Carry it like Jesus did his cross until the day, one day, when he will take it away. And we have that promise in the resurrection of Jesus, that one day, the cross that he has given us to carry will be taken from us. It may not be yet. It may not be now. It may be days, months, years to come. It may not even be within this life. But one day, even in this life or the next, God will take away that cross. But in the meantime, we are to take up that cross daily. And we are, if you like, to treat that thing like Jesus treated his cross. Something that he was asked to bear, to carry for a while. Until the day when God took it away. And yet also to see that very thing as the means by which God is doing his work in the world. Because that's one of the remarkable things about our Christian faith, that the cross upon which Jesus died, that we remember just a few weeks ago on Good Friday, that cross was the means by which God saved the world. And so it may just be that that very thing that God has given you to carry, that difficult relationship, that painful illness, that pain, whatever it might be, much as you would wish to get away from him, it may just be that that's the very thing that God is going to use to change you. Because often it's very through the very difficult things in our lives that those are the things through which God changes us. I remember meeting a man a little while ago whose business had failed during the uh, covid uh, his business had basically come to an end, and he, he had basically lost pretty well everything. And yet, his story was that in losing everything, he had begun to learn that his true value was not in himself and what he achieved, but his true value was found in God. And that gave him, he said, a security that he never found before. 
that before he was always thinking that his true value was in how much money he made or how successful his business was. But now he lost all of that. He could find his true value in the fact that God loved him, that Jesus died for him. It's just a little tiny story of how through the one thing that he didn't want, that he'd been asked to carry for a while, the failure of his business, that somehow God had given him something even more precious. And so today, what is your cross? I don't know what that is. You know what it is. But maybe Jesus is asking you to take it up, carry it daily, and let it change you. Not to make you bitter, but to teach you patience, to teach you sympathy with other people who have to carry similar crosses like yours, to teach you trust, to enable you to let the old self die and the new self be born. So often we look back in our lives, our Christian lives, and we see how the most difficult things have been the things that God has used to change us. And so we're called as Christians to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, and then lastly, to follow Jesus. Christians at the end of the day are followers of Jesus Christ. That's who we are. Nothing more, nothing less. We are baptized into a life of saying that I want to follow Jesus. I want to be like one of those disciples, those 12 who were called to go around with Jesus, copy Jesus, look at him, spend their lives with him, to be with him. And living the Christian life is learning to be close to Jesus every day. I was saying to the candidates for confirmation and baptism earlier on, that at the heart of our Christian life is this ever-deepening relationship that we are invited into with the God who made us through Jesus Christ, His Son. And it's a life of learning to follow Him, learning to stay close to Him, learning to hear His voice speaking to us, learning to discern what He's calling us to do and to be. We talked about how important it was to have that little discipline in our lives of making sure that every day, that no day goes by when we don't spend some time just maybe opening the Scriptures, asking God, what are you saying to me today? What's your word for me today that I need to carry through, and how do I just simply obey that word? And talking to Him about what's on your heart and what's on your mind, staying close to Jesus, following Him every day. And we talked about how easy it was to drift on in our lives, and maybe we go for days, weeks, without really connecting in to Jesus Christ, and we begin to drift apart, and we're no longer following Him, we're following our own way. There is no better way to follow Jesus and to stay close to Him day after day, to listen for His voice speaking to you, to just to discern it. Often, not in some great booming voice from heaven, it rarely is like that. Jesus very rarely seems to speak like that. He often speaks to you through the words of a friend, through the song on a radio, through a, a text of Scripture that you read. Just listening. Jesus, what are you saying to me? How can I follow you? How can I obey you today? How can I stay close to you? This is the path to finding our true selves. To deny our old selves to take up our cross daily and to allow those difficult things in our lives to change us, to teach us patience and humility and grace, and to stay close to Jesus day after day. Our old self has to die. That self that wants everything to revolve around me, that wants to be the center of attention, for everything to work out my way. That old self must die in order that our new Christ-like selves might be born. And when I think of that, and when I think of that invitation to be remade in the image of Jesus Christ, there's something in me that longs 
to be that because I cannot think of a more alive person than Jesus Christ. I can't think of more alive people than the saints on earth that I know, the people who are closest to Jesus, because they're the people I know who have contentment and joy and hope. And so my prayer for each one of you being baptized and confirmed today is that you will indeed today and all the way through your lives find your true selves in Christ by learning to deny yourself, to take up your cross, to follow Jesus every day. Amen. We're going to have our prayers of intercession led by Florence and Roger.